get what they want. I guess you do that. Snack you were live. We're live. There you go. <laughs> Yay. Without an intro, sometimes it's hard to tell when we're live and when we're not. But yeah. welcome to the FICA broadcast. On Tuesday evenings, we're back. We got we got guests. We got a show. Naki's back from COVID. Oh um, so, you know, it was Yay. time to have another show. We've been chasing this one for a minute. And the bad news was we had a hard time matching up the schedules. The good wow. news was it was because they're so busy with their business and that's a good thing. That's always a good thing. If we're not able to connect because you all are busy doing your business and doing what you, you know, the things you love to do, that's a good thing. So we finally got you in the studio, so to speak, in our virtual studio. Thank I'm going to turn it over to Naki if you want to run through the intros and the bios, and then we'll go from there. I can't wait. Oh, my gosh. So this is EPV Films. I know you have seen them everywhere. They're everywhere filming and doing birthday parties. And lately they've been doing a lot of funerals because of COVID. Um, but, but because they have been doing amazing work and I've been stalking them on Instagram. Um, they've been super busy. So we're so grateful to have you guys here. We have a uh, Richard Manuel Fitoa, who is the founder and owner. We have um, his daughter, Eveline Evi who is also an owner and she's the E in EPV. Um, she's the eldest of their children. And just their beautiful mother, their beautiful mother slash sister, that you guys look like <laughs> sisters, Mary. Um, and she's the director of operations, wife, mother, everything amazing about this company. And she probably runs everything, including Richard. <laughs> 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 so we love that the the reason why I reached out and I'm gonna have you guys tell your story but let me tell you why I reached out because okay. um, we we see pe brown people with faces like us all the mm -hmm. time but everyday America doesn't see us as uh, media sources yeah. or, or you know producers and, and 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 just in the media so and there's kids that just think, we just can't do that. Mm. And so for them to see brown faces that look like the three of you, no matter how young or no matter how old you are, mm. that you're inspiring people to, I think I'm going to do that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you're inspiring kids, adults, anybody and everyone who's watching your media company grow. And just everywhere you go, they're like, I, I think I can do that. Now that I've seen somebody that looks like me, like mm -hmm. it's possible. So thank you so much for what you're doing and, and the work that you've been doing in the community. So I'm gonna ask each and every one of you, um, we're gonna start with the ladies. Uh, Mary, can you tell us a little bit about your yourself, your parents, sure. yeah. you know, where you grew up and, and of course, who you're married to and your kids. Sounds good. Um, Naki and Carl, I want to say thank you first for this opportunity um, given to us to be a part of this uh, platform. We have been tuning in to some of the podcasts and the discussions that uh, you guys have been holding. So thank you so much. It's very humbling for us and our little family to have this space. Uh, my name is Mary, but my Tongan name is Haualafaia. And I come from a Tongan background. My father's name is Maile Koloto, and my mother's name is Latu Fusmalohi Koloto, and they come from a little island called Tonga. And um, just a, a little brief touch up of my background. Basically, we are um, God-fearing, very faith-based, um, my father is a pastor at the United Methodist Church, and his father is a pastor of the Wesleyana Church. So uh, my background was very um, church-orientated uh, family, faith, but um, as some would, would say, PKs are probably the worst kids in church. <laughs> but um, I... I I believe that because of that foundation, um, it molded me to, to be grounded and uh, be able to um, overcome difficulties that 
we Polynesians go through trying to keep up with today's society. You know, being a, a young mother here in, um, in America, it's, oops, sorry. <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah, trying to uh, make sure that I'm leading by example for my kids and having a teenager come behind me or so to speak beside me uh, wanting to be a good good influence, but at the same time, um, having her understand that she can be her own self, you know, because uh, a lot of times when we grew up, we were kind of told how to be, and we were molded in a certain way. So yeah, just breaking that um, that that barrier of not being able to communicate with her during this time, but yeah, it's been such a blessing. Evie, you wanna go next? Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is um, Eveline and Evie. I'm the oldest child and grandchild. Um, I'm E and I actually really wanted to join the EPV films so I kept asking my parents and asking, and then they're like, no, no. And then they bought me a new um, camera. And so I was really excited. Yeah, I was gonna ask, um, that, that it kind of answers one of my questions I was gonna ask Evie is the, uh, sometimes we, we gotta talk to our children to involve them in the business. So I was kind of wondering, was it a, you know, the parents are reaching out and, trying to talk to her over and over and she doesn't want to do it or was she just fired up from the beginning? So it sounds like she was interested from day one. That's awesome. That is awesome. Thank you, Evie. That's me. So yes, hi, I'm uh, Richard. I'm on with it all, like uh, Walter's older brother. Um, I'm the, it, it, this is, this, goes uh probably we've been doing this for one year now and it's been uh i'm usually not the i don't like you know i'm not the one that talks or thing i'm always like behind the scene guy like the tech guy i deal with all the the cameras the the mics the audio and every day is an improvement but uh starting this business all started with one camcorder and it was based on a family vacation that we started to uh we thought about just using that camcorder for a, um, for a family vacation. And it just ended up, we just got another camera. I started doing some research on YouTube, started studying about different things. And and it right now it's just getting better and better every day. That's awesome. Yeah, the, uh, it's really amazing how, how much you can learn from YouTube. So like the first thing I noticed when I came on in the pre-show, was the gear i saw microphones i saw a wireless microphone i was like "Ooh, is that the road wireless go so i mean i could geek out on the equipment you know all show we could just spend the whole show talking about equipment but it's really amazing to me how the information is out there so if you want to get on and spend hours on youtube and learn how to do something you can do it if you want to do it um but you know the information is there it's just the desire to sit there, sort through videos that, you know, does this make sense? Does this even what I'm looking for? But, you know, you can filter through and find that information. Did you know that was a resource when you started out? Did you kind of figure you could go to YouTube or did you just find your way there? Um, not by happenstance, but was that something you were looking forward to as, as a resource or was it just something you just found? So, so I started doing live stream, but not for EPV at another church that I was at about seven years ago and it was off of a camera called amiibo and you know those are the cameras where you just control the ipad and you have everything based and you just zoom in and and i wasn't you know looking at it i was doing it for the church i wasn't looking at it as a business but then everything came after we put that one camcorder and there's this one guy that you know shout out to him he, he helped me a lot in, in searching doing my research and what to get and what not to get and what to look out for uh, he's on Facebook. He's a, he he runs the Tongan Vision Tongan Vision um, live stream. His name is Bala Moimoy, but he runs a lot of all the live stream from the island from Tonga. 
Um, he helped me a lot go this way. And I thought that one spending on that one camcorder, but then every time I looked up on YouTube, and then it was just getting, get this, get this. And then me and my wife would argue. Me and my wife would argue. <laughs> she was just, <laughs> so then it out. just got you to that. Out. <laughs> it just got, what you doing? You know. What you doing, Richard? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, but yeah. To answer your question, uh, I I want to say yes. I learned a lot from YouTube and you know the resources. I knew it was there, but I just got to keep watching videos. Yeah, it's funny that um, you asked if 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 uh, if he looked through YouTube because that's something he would tell me. You know. When you're at home, we have free time, YouTube, some of the equipment we have, so you know what you're doing. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, but you know, as a, as a stay-at-home mom, also as full-time worker, we're like doctor, lawyer, you know, cooker, everything. So I'm like, to even put that in is also like, it's a, it's a I'd say it's an added blessing, but for the time it's, yeah. I try the same things with Naki sometimes. I'm like, well, if you just, just get on YouTube and watch the videos. And she's like, hey, you can explain it to me when we see each other in the studio. Yeah. I, I don't need to look at the videos. You show me how to do it. <laughs> no, I, I'm an on hand kind of person. Like I got to mm. learn it while I'm doing it. Yeah. Um, but the passion, you like, if you're passionate for it, mm. you're going to do the work, right? right. So other people are like, are you crazy you're watching all these videos? But if you love it and it's it doesn't feel like work to you, um, which is what I'm getting from you. It's just something that you love to do. You'll do the work. Like right. there's a, our studio that we have that someday you're going to come there and, and when this pandemic is over Yay. so we can um, exchange equipment information. Yeah. <laughs> but um, when we first wanted to do a podcast, we knew nothing about it, right? We mm. just got two microphones and just started talking to each other in the car. Um, but then when we got a studio, Carl literally was on uh, YouTube like forever and put the yeah. studio together by himself and, oh, and wow. my husband did helped him like you know a nail here a drill here but Carl did all the electrical work and he put everything together himself and it works yeah who knew <laughs> that's so good yeah. I, I think that because you're passionate and you love what you're doing it's you're just gonna okay now I want more you're gonna need mm -hmm. more equipment mama we're going to need more equipment so that that I see that coming. But the support of the community has just been like outrageous. I've just seen you guys are so busy and so busy. So you started with the family vacation and then did did it start with family members asking you to, oh, can you record since you're recording? And then it just got technical. So what the um, like. I'm I'm always, I'm not the person to be standing in the front with the camera, and I'm always shy. Like, like my first gig when I finally got my uh, device that streams to Facebook, then I was even asked to be at a funeral. Yeah, I you just I up. just showed up, and mm -hmm. you know when I talked to my friend from Australia, he told me, you know, you gotta do a lot of freebies to get yourself out there. You gotta do a lot of freebies. So I showed up to a funeral, and I was so shy just to hold my camera in the front. You know, I didn't want people to, you know, especially. You know, our, our culture, they're really strict and it's uh, traditional. So I got up in the front of my camera and then started streaming and I was, it just went from there and, and I got used to it. Uh, you know, the um, my daughter is now getting used to it. I'd be telling her to like, go do some moves out of the, you know, and she's like, no, no, no. I was like, no, just do it. We're the media team. <laughs> we don't want anyone's back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not that. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's just a language right evie you know what one ch compared to the, <laughs> ch <Yeah>. ch you know <laughs> it's a parent kid thing so yeah. i love that we've had to like teach her you know all the when you walk in front of elders say dulo you know all these these um are are respecting way of greeting people and stuff even though we're the media team, but we are still poly, you yeah. know? So it's always, and my, my dad will ask her like, do you wear lava lava when you go around? You know, yeah. the, the, don't walk around like looking like that. And we're like, no, no, we know, we know. I know it's crazy. Cause you know, it's our people. So we'll talk about you, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, whose kid is that? 
<laughs> so they do that. And who's their father? I was like, oh my God, okay, okay. Too low, too low. <laughs> I mean, it's awesome that that you're showing your daughter and the the, the younger ones the, that what hard work looks mm. like, what working and doing passion looks like. Mm. Like your daughter, and Carl says this all the time, your daughter is watching you guys live and do your passion. And so you're giving her the tools to whatever she wants to be with hard work and passion. She's mm -hmm. learning that from you two. Like she's learning that from the both of you. Thank so, you so I, I think that's awesome that you're living and doing what you want and what you're know, passionate about because mm -hmm. you're showing her how to live. Yeah. Live and do what you want. So big kudos to you guys. And, and we appreciate it's such a blessing. It's such Thank a blessing. You. Let's talk about, um, Let's talk about mom, right? Mom is the CEO. She's the CFO. She's the, you know, you wear- UFO. You got a, <laughs> you've got a ton of different hats that you wear without being um, in a family business. And I would assume that that role probably plays, you know, switches over the lines in the business as well. Mm. How do you manage to, I mean, being a mom's hard enough. Um, right being, you know, involved in your culture, um, all those kind of things. And then let's, let's throw a family business, not just a business, but a family yeah. business on top of all that. How do you, how do you balance all that? Um, that's a great question. We, um, we were, before we got into the business, uh, Richard and I were uh, choir conducting at the ministries that we were in. So with our um, community, it's always been like a 24 seven thing to there, there are no breaks, it's all gas. So basically, the only time that you would get with well, I would get rest is, is bedtime, or when I'm when I'm at work, like, I'll tell my family, I get more rest at work than I am at home. But that that kind of I, I believe that was like our training grounds to prepare us for the busyness that was going to come after that because that helped us to know that I needed to give him time you know for him to do his studying with all the equipment then I need to schedule the kids to make sure that everyone is still getting their 4.0s get meeting their class expectations and then making sure that there's food on the table breakfast lunch and dinner so if it wasn't for um, for those training grounds and our faith, I think I would have lost it. I would have just been like, oh, you know. But because of um, our faith being the foundation that's been the go-to, especially during this time, and our families have been so supportive. His parents, my parents, and that's been um, being very helpful, you know, because she's on on the job with us. And then the other two are either with his parents or my parents. So that, that's that been um, a lot of help for us too. And especially for me. Yeah, I spent a lot of time thinking of, you know, God's not gonna give me more than I can handle. Mm. So, you know, when I get in those moments of like, wow, I'm just, I feel overwhelmed and then I just, you know, I, a lot of times we'll just go back to, and Naki and I talk about this all the time, like we can only do what, like what we can do. And there's a, there's a maximum at some point, And then we're not, we don't get more than we're supposed to have. But I think that, you know, having such a involved business yeah. uh, and being around uh, your community while you're doing it. So you're, it's not like you're leaving your community to, to operate the business. I think that that would, I would think that would help um but hey you've only got 24 hours in a day and i'm sure sometimes it feels like you need a couple more yeah. <laughs> uh, how about you evie how do you uh do you, is there a point where you think this is uh a lot or are you still in that phase where you're like i want to learn more and more and more um i do feel like everything is a lot when we have to wake up at like five in the morning and then get home around like 10 at night or like 11 and like it's a lot of work to learn a lot of equipment at once mm -hmm. with everything. So yeah, it's a hard work. It's hard. Yeah. And are you enjoying it? <laughs> are you enjoying it? 
Pardon? Are you enjoying being out with your parents and, and, and doing the work that you're doing? Yes, it, it, um, I am. To see um, other people, how they um, celebrate things, and it, it's really interesting. Yeah, you get ideas like, hmm. <laughs> right, right. And you yeah. probably, are you meeting a lot of people? Um, do you get to see your friends that you haven't seen because of the pandemic? Yes, I do. Awesome. So on that note, um, being around different types of celebrations, um, have you seen so, it, people celebrate in ways that, that it was just that comment that you said, I get to see people celebrate in different ways. Uh, has that been a, an eye opener to you in the way that different ways that, that uh, other people celebrate? Yes, it's really different from how I celebrate the things that they do. And it's interesting to um, learn new things and to know how they do things mm -hmm. and how I do it. And it's like, I like to compare things. Good to have all the information. Just real um, quick, I'm talking about the support of, of our community. Um, we have LA Tweetow. You guys are the best. Hello, EPV family. Um, thank you. Yes, uh, Maria Fonua, thank you guys so much for streaming. My late grandpa, Makawi wow. Kafa. you made it possible for his kids, grandkids that couldn't make it, they were able to watch the stream. Um, we have Maury Manamea, thank you, EPV. I was able to um, watch her niece's baptism um, while she was in Washington, you filmed her niece's uh, baptism. That's Maury Monomea. Uh, Tui K. K. Peterson, way to go, Lofa. Blessings to you and your family business. Hasanita Tui Onetoa, I love Evie, Lofa, and Richard. And just tons and tons of people. Wow. Tui Kimale Goloto, uh, Mata Ele Finau. Um, tons and tons of people. Jeff, Lupe, they're all Thank sending their love. Thank you so much. Thank you so I'm much. I'm so, so proud. There's like, you know, 50 people on just wow. hearts and, and, and just um, loving your work. So Thank you so much. Yes, yes. So all the, has it been different? Well, I know that the Manamea family are Samoan and, mm. and the, a lot of your work is from the Tongan community. Have you been able to expand outside of the PI community? Or we still get we're still trying to get there because that that would be awesome too Tim. we you know. um we had a booking i think it's not confirmed yet by a latin family right. coming up but that that was not confirmed and i was uh contacted by san Mateo county to do one of the covid um just to like before every stream i put in the, the covid restriction just a little play a little short video before you know every sunday service happened yeah and santa clara Santa Clara County. That's Amazing. awesome. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. I'm so happy for you guys. And you're going to continue to grow. And this, this amazing work that you're doing is that it's like the reason why it's so successful too, that you're streaming people's baptisms, people's mm. birthdays. And, you know, with COVID restrictions, even though we say don't come, the <laughs> we're still 200. But everyone's people. there. <laughs> still 200 deep but there's also two to 300 family members yeah. that are watching from other locations and you yeah. know some are elders that can't travel so it's i think it's an amazing um job that you guys are doing and mm. i'm so proud of y'all thank you thank so you. much yeah. there's also a uh, documentation factor to it because yeah you know you're there you you um i don't know i'm old i still call it tape so you film it um and you know, not only do people get to see it on the stream, but the people that are participating in it can go back to a website mm -hmm. or YouTube or you know wherever that that stream is warehouse, and they get to mm -hmm. see the event not only from participating in it, but they get to see it as a kind of a spectator later on. So I think you know uh, these are the kind of things that it it really struck us. Naki and I went to a elementary school graduation, I think in, in early, in spring of 2018. Um, and we set up, we had our booth and our banner and, you know, we had our, our cards and all the things that we did. And it really struck us at that, at that time that, wow, this is a piece of the culture that 
really doesn't get that much exposure because mm. it's not like a big uh it's not the it's not pifa in san diego it's not a big uh halal competition it's not right, you know and it's right. not any of those but it's our kids graduating from elementary school or from middle school or you know a graduation party or celebrations those kind of things the dancing there the language is there the culture is mm -hmm. there and so we were always thinking like how would we just bring a couple cameras like how would that work right. um and then when we heard when i heard she explained to me what you do i was like that is so so needed for us mm -hmm. to get that out and get the exposure and allow not just for documentation purposes but yeah. allow people to see it you know live like my my niece is graduating and and that's in san francisco and i live in seattle but hey here's a stream and i can actually see it so mm -hmm. i was so excited to hear you know when she was explaining that is is that did that just grow out of the the church uh, and the doing the live streaming with them or did you think that it could become like you're getting public public work now you're working with the right. county of santa clara the county of san mateo um did you did you picture it becoming this big or was this kind of a thing where you were like let's just try a couple events and see how it goes well it was um it was always my wife that pushed the next level and I was like no 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 I'm not ready yet we're not ready yet. so all the time when people called she's like let's do it and I'm like oh man I, I don't have the equipment yet then all of a sudden she'll see the order there's more equipment coming in and it just like after one booking another book come but with the church yeah, uh, after that one first funeral that I did, and then I, I really didn't, I just lived everywhere else, but it was just like playing around live. And then when all COVID hit, I got an opportunity to to live stream my church. Mm. And at that time, I was just using one 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 network. So it was just a lot of throttling. Then I figured out how to get three That's different crazy. networks and bond everything together to get a solid network base. So now, you know, so a lot of times I'm able at places where Wi-Fi is hard to get, I'm able to get it with bonding all three of my networks. Uh -huh. One day I know what I know what uh, what equipment, I don't know if it's Teradec or if it's the live view, but one day Poly by Design will graduate to that level too. Those are <laughs> when I hear you talking about that, I got equipment envy. I'm like, we need yeah. one of those. <laughs> I have uh, I have I have both of those, the ones you're talking about. It's just it's a hit or miss. Sometimes I go to funerals and sometimes when I stream it to Facebook, there's a drop. It cuts off, not from my side, but it cuts off from the cloud, from Facebook. And I, I really hate it a lot when I have to go through that because, you know, I'm doing business. I'm in the process right now, me and my family in the process of trying to get more advanced equipment so stuff like that don't happen. We just now got a, a, a drone, so that's at funeral sites, uh, when we go to cemetery, when we do the escort, then we'll pull in and then I'll let the drone go and it'll fly over. That's beautiful. And drone that's too. Hmm. I see all kinds of money being spent at Poly by Design. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, <laughs> but it's funny. But it's funny because I hear you saying, "Well, we don't have that equipment, but we get it." And then you get business. It's like God mm. provides, right? Like right. Yeah. you know, you need the equipment to do this job, but you don't have it. I'm gonna take a leap of faith. Get right. the equipment and God always provides. I, I love that. I just real quick, we have some people on here. Um, a big Vic is checking in from Australia. Oh, wow. um, he just hit Bay Costa Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Now, and he's just sending big love. Lesieli Hemuli um, is asking when you, you do a project, um, the turnaround period when they film something, is it one day, two days? Um, is there much editing done? Or do you go live all the time? So we, this is the hard, this is the hard part because um, when they want a hard copy, we're able to give a hard copy, but unedited. Cause like, for example, our Polynesian funerals are like five, six hours. Yeah. I have batteries that run for some, five, six hours. Some two days. And just to input that into a computer is so, it's so many days, so much data. Yeah. And I can't, so a lot of people get it mixed up when they ask me, can we do this video like video. videography? And I, I try to explain to them that it's two different things. Live stream and videography is two different things. Like if you want me to do videography, I, I can do that. But that's more more like post edit after editing. the yeah, editing after the live stream is just shoot. And I'm editing just ed at, the, at the time. Yeah. So it's better to depending on what you're. 
Yeah, we 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 basically based on on live stream only. Mm-hmm. And when they want a hard copy, we can give them a hard copy. But it's exactly what's gonna ha- what, what shows on Facebook. That's the hard copy, because like I said, the editing there's a lot of rendering in that. Yeah. That's awesome. When uh, so one of the favorite my favorite thing to do with Poly by Design, I love the podcast. But my favorite thing to do is go to events and interview people and talk to the organizers and see the dance competitions or the music or you know whatever the events bring. That's really my my favorite part of Poly by Design. Um, what is each of your favorite parts of EPV? What is the things? Because if it would just go to events all day long, and I I don't know if Naki's the feels the same. I could go to events go to a different event every day. If, if I could make that my, you know, what pays my bills, I could go to a different event every day, talk to people, um, you know, do all the video stuff as well, but it just that I could do every day, all day. What is each of your favorite parts of EPV so far? Like um, Evie mentioned before, um, seeing the different cultures. I think that's my favorite part. What is going to, even, even if we go to a Tongan event and it's the same event, but each family has their own distinctive way of, of celebrating, you know, their own way of celebrating. And we would come home and that's our time to debrief. And we talk and we're like, and we, and we always have to talk to our daughter. What did you like about today? What'd you think about, you know, how the family did that? Would you do it like that? You know, so I think that's my favorite part about EPV is learning that not only the different culture, but the different um, dynamics of family and how each family functions. And everyone's, everyone is different. Like we are Polynesian, but each family has their own way of functioning. And I, and I, and I just appreciate that so much. How about you, Evie? Oh, my favorite part is after the work because- <laughs> Your feet, huh? Yeah. And knowing that um, I worked so hard to help other families and then seeing them like congratulate us and um, it's just really nice. Yeah. And Richard? My part is, um, you know, just the process of leaving at dark time, coming back at dark time, that my kids get to grow up seeing you know, as a family, this is what we used to do every single morning. Because usually funerals, they start at nine. I force my family to get out of bed at five. We cross that bridge and we go and we set up. So it's, so it, it just, I just do it like that. So nothing happens. We're ready. And then when we come back, we come back, it's like probably 6 p.m., 7 p.m. And it's dark. We're crossing that bridge again. Mm-hmm. And I just, that's my favorite part. I get to see my kids grow seeing that. Mm-hmm. Are there any uh, Manuwa Fetoas that aren't amazing? Because each ones we meet are, are uh, <laughs> right. it's, a, it's like a level up every time we meet one. And so, but <laughs> talk a little bit about that. I mean, I can see where Evie gets hers. Um, she's sitting with the both of you there, but were there uh, role models or people in your, in your past growing up that you can kind of look back at and, and that told you, hey, you can do it or, you know, gave you the inspiration to be an entrepreneur. And I think um, for both Mary and Richard, but, you know, in the end, Evie too. I mean, she's probably sitting in between her two role models that, that tell her she can do it. But I'd like to hear from, from each of you of who maybe gave you a nudge at, a, you know, growing up or made an impression on you that you think helped you on your journey you're on now. With me, it was, um, I would say, hmm, I'll just say my parents, my uncle, just seeing the hard work. I, I, I'm a type of person that um, I, I break a lot of things apart and fix it. Like just when I'm not doing anything, I'm at home breaking something, putting it back together, rewiring this. And my uncle is a mechanic. He fixed a lot of vehicles. And every time we do the same thing, break down vehicles, fix it again. And um, yeah. Am I your role model? <laughs> my role model is my parents too, but mostly my um, namesake, my grandma. Um, she really helped me when I was younger with all my school and education. She wanted me to be like her. 
Um, and I just really look up to her and like literally look up to her. Yeah, she's passed away. So, yeah. Um, my role model, I would, I would say same as, as my parents as well. I think um, we could all relate that as a poly community, we come from like hard working parents. Like when they came here, they weren't playing. You know, it was, it, what they did in the island, they basically did here. And, um, and also with my husband's parents, they, they've, been, they've been working from however long and, and where they are was an inspiration for us to try to establish something for our kids. So like we try to, um, to explain to our kids, we're doing this for y'all. You know, this is not for us. This isn't, we're not, we're not gonna, we're not gonna reap in the harvest. This is for you guys. So I think the inspiration comes a lot from seeing our parents, how they would come and take up like two, three jobs, you know, just to, for us to, to, um, to live in that luxury, coming to America and, and seeing them, you know, my, my dad used to do yate, um, and then my mom, she was very uh, uh, educated. So it was kind of like, she was the brains and he's the hands. And so just seeing them, that power couple working together, and then they dropped all of that and just went straight full on ministry 100%. And then it was like, it's not even about us anymore. It's about them, or it's about the family. It's not about me. So I think that's where the uh, the passion and the drive comes from. I think it's a great example. And again, I'm going to keep using your kids. That it's a great example, and it's a, a, um, a an amazing ingredient for success. Um, mm. You're giving them confidence. Um, you're giving them, you know, praise and and faith. They they see the faith and the hard work, mm -hmm. and just. Um, you know, you're taking her out with you and she sees the hard work. So I'm sure she appreciates it and doesn't take you guys for granted. I'm sure she does. It's a love and hate. It's a love and hate relationship. <laughs> I, I can't spending a lot of time with her parents, but in, in the end, she keeps coming back, right? She keeps mm. doing the work and learning and going with you guys and carrying, lugging the equipment around. Yeah. I know how that is. Like you gotta get there. Everybody's gotta lug it, set it up, focus. And then at the end of the day, you nobody's gonna help you pack it unless you have family there, but, but it's, <laughs> it's right. Uh, but you know, it's, it's a great Testament because mm. that's why we do everything is our kids and right. you're, you're giving her success. She knows what success, and it does it success isn't always about money right right it's always about doing things that make you happy mm -hmm. if you're happy then you're already rich if you're doing what you love like your parents are doing emmy it, it they're rich in love and mm -hmm. and you know showing you everything and and you're a smart girl like you're going to chabot college you're taking classes there tell us about that like tell whoa. Us, um, it's really hard, actually, but it's helping me with my future job that I want to be and learning a lot of stuff that I don't usually learn in my grade. And to actually be on top of everyone in education is a big advantage. <laughs> and so I think it's never too early to start college, like, um, Get ready for college. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. And tell everybody what grade you're in right now. I'm in seventh grade. Hello. <laughs> By the time you graduate, you'll already have your BA or something. Already get a job. <laughs> right. That's, and what do you want to be when you, you get out of college, when you're done? I want to be a lawyer for crime, um, crime and justice. And yeah. Girl, you be changing all the time. <laughs> I mean, there's no limit to what you want to be. That's good. That's, That's awesome. amazing. That's a great financial plan too. Get the college done yeah. while she's still at home. Tuition's cheaper. Not only tuition's cheaper, but you're not looking for a place to stay. You're doing this while you're you're in school, and 
you know, more importantly, you're staying challenged. If you're, mm -hmm. you're in college classes, then your classes that you're in at school may bore you a little bit to, to some degree <laughs> because you're advanced and just keeping and staying focused is probably a challenge, but good for you with the, you know, with the education. Um, Naki has said it earlier, you know, we're always on stage, always on stage. And I think that um, Mary and Richard talking about, you know, their parents, you know, they were always on stage. You talk with, you know, reverence as to their work ethic and their love and their faith. And, you know, you're on stage now. And I think that it's just, it's beautiful that really you're putting everybody else on stage for their events, for their celebrations, for their, you know, key moments in their life. Um, you're creating the stage for people to be on. And Richard, I know, I know where you're coming from because Naki and I don't care to be asked questions and, and, and we like to be behind the camera or behind the microphone and be the ones asking the questions. And we went to Samoa uh, in 2019 and we ended up on a television show a morning show oh, wow. and we were both like um we like sitting on the other side of the microphone asking the questions not yeah. being the ones <laughs> in front of the camera answering them all so I can appreciate uh wanting to be you know it, it, but I think it's important that your story is told and the community mm. sees yes. like all the things that you're doing and all the things that you know why the inspiration why it's important to you um, and the benefits that that your daughter is getting in real time, in real living color, she's seeing you know the benefits of of living the way that you live. So, and that's this is not I'm trying to sign off or anything. I'm just feeling it. So I was like, I, gotta get this out. <laughs> I was about to start you playing the organ. Me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I just want, there's more people shouting you out, so I just want to acknowledge them. Um, so Amy and Patrick Mappa, Go EPV, you did a great job. Vika Hifo. Full strong, love you, Evie, and your parents. Uh, Paula Moi Moi Latu um, is checking in from Sydney, Australia. That's the guy love, right there. Love you, EPV family, um, and so and lucky, lucky Siaki, seventh grader, having college classes already. That's awesome. Keep your eyes on the prize. Praise God. So oh, lots yeah. and tons and tons of people that appreciate. How much love much love and so we're grateful for your time and space and we really like when we got a hold of you're like what are we going to talk about what are we going to do i'm t that this is what we wanted to do was highlight your beautiful family because you know they hire you and then you go out and come in and they real people really need to know um your background and appreciate the hard work that you guys are doing appreciate that evie gets up at five o'clock in the morning to go with her parents to to work the, uh, you know, whether it's a wedding or a birthday mm. party. Um, it's, and to, and again, I keep stressing this, it's important for the younger generation to see brown people that look like them doing great things. You know, we're stereotyped as athletes, which yeah. is amazing. It's yes, it awesome is amazing. that we, yeah. and, and we're stereotyped as actors, which is yeah. again, amazing, but they need to see us as, teachers media mm. you know a lawyer a mother that is running a company and has kids a, a father that is working and on youtube you know six hours of the day to, to learn his trait to perfect the jobs that you guys are doing so it's thank it's you so, so much beautiful. we are so grateful to have you guys um i appreciate the work that you're doing there is so many people <laughs> shouting out your names and, and um there's a John to Evai. Good job, Richard. Um, and still, Leslie Ellie is um, shouting you guys. Everybody's calling Evie a young queen. So, okay, girl. <laughs> also, you know, she's okay. also inspiring her generation. Oh. Definitely. Also inspiring her generation to see look at Evie. She's working hard, she's going to school and has college, you know, in her background. They can do it. They can, do, can it. do it. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm sorry. To be honest, you don't just inspire your people your age. There are people like I'm watching this. I'm inspired. So you know, it doesn't just have to be people younger than you. There are plenty of people that are a lot older than you that may need to hear. Look, look what all this young lady Ooh. is doing. 
like maybe I do have an extra couple hours a day that I could do, you know, X, Y, or Z. So your inspiration doesn't have to just go to the people that are, that are younger than you. There are plenty of people watching that, that will look at that and say, wow, am I, am I using all 24 of my hours every day or am I <laughs> wasting a whole bunch on Netflix? <laughs> right. 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 When you own your own company, there is no sleep. You're just like up for the next how many years. Um, where, where do you guys see you guys? Where do you see your company in five years? I can, um, we're, we're just, we're getting, we're trying to get bigger from here. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, every I work a full time, like um, seven in the morning to 3.30 p.m. When I come home, I do a lot of studying. And I'm, you know, my wife, she takes care of the kids. She's full-time mom. So she sometimes, a it builds up and I'm still on the computer. <laughs> but, you know, we're just, we're right, right now, we're, sometimes we have bookings. Uh, there's a couple of times we had three bookings in one day. Yeah. And it's really hard. And first people to confirm, then we go with them. But they always ask if anything happens, can we give it, can we let them know? Or So I, me, my wife, we talked about it, that we we're, we're, try, we're going to try to get bigger from here just depending on time. Yeah, I think um, with, the, with, the, with the vision, I think with the vision, what's for us, because we are, um, because we are a poly community, at the same time, the, I think our, our hardship would be I mean, our success is with the poly community and then our hardship is with the poly community. Right. Because, and, and this is not to like knock anyone or anyone or anything off, but because our success is through it, you know, ev everyone wants kind of like the, the freebie from the beginning, you know? And for the vision that, that I'm having or that, we're ha that we have for for the company is like we want to expand into the Balangi community. But in order for us to get there, like let us, let's all try to do this together, you know, to, to get there. And then when we're there, you know, we're gonna pull everybody up. We're all going together. But for the now, like let us be solid. Let's get those payments in guys. You know, like, you know what I mean? Like, and, um, I think that's where the vision is. I want us to, we, we want to branch into getting, uh, you know, more professional gigs, you know, doing conventions, doing retreats, you know, maybe Lakewood church, you know, it doesn't have to be church, but somewhere where we're outside of, of our comfort zone, but in order to get there just for, for our own people to, to, to move with us, you know, to, so we can move together. That makes a lot of sense. I think um, like a lot of churches have streaming in house, but a lot of, a lot of the churches that have streaming in house, if they have events, once COVID gets off of us and they have, you know, like a big picnic or a barbecue or those kind of things, mm -hmm. uh, those are really geared towards getting, you know, they're not going to pack up all their equipment out of their church Cute. and they'll put it outside so those are you know i think those are probably the things that you guys can fill that niche but i think you you talked about that and i think it's really important that um we talk about these kind of things of you know the freebie or the discount rate or you know what are the poly hookup you know naki and i always talk about <laughs> the family you know, discount right the family <laughs> discount That's whether it's you know fifth cousin or sixth cousin <laughs> or you know the neighbor family discount so Naki and I, I mean, remember we were in Utah and, you know, we were, we wanted to buy some t-shirts from a, a PI vendor. And he said, no, no, here, here, just take them. And we're like, no, wait, no, like those are in a glass case to sell. We don't want them for free. Like you, yeah. you know, we want to buy them from you. And I think that's a piece of what we need to overcome, but you said it well in that, you know, we all need to be as great as we can and fulfill our greatness and then we can help more people. Right. And if we shortcut our greatness and, you know, Evie, you, you know, if you were to drop out from college to do something, 
you know, that might shortcut your greatness. And mm. if you're able to do everything that you want to do in your life, at some point, you're going to be able to turn around and help more people, right. as opposed to if you don't achieve all of your greatness, then you probably can't help as many people. So mm. you put that really well in that, you know, we got to get to the place and we're going to bring people along, we're going to help people up. But you know, you need to achieve your own greatness as a, as a business and as a family. So, you know, that's a tough question. Naki and I get that asked a lot. Where do you see poly by design in five years? And we're like bigger. I, you know, I don't know how much bigger, but yeah. like just want to keep growing. So right. it's hard to put a, you know, a number or a size or something mm. like that on it. But you guys are, that's, it's so amazing to see a family uh, growing like this and not just putting all the eggs in one basket and saying, it's just this, like if this fails, we don't have our faith. We don't have our education. We don't have, you know, that's, that's not setting yourself up to win. Mm. So very well, very well done. Um, and again, this is uh, we, we want to promote you guys and your business. How do all the people that are on right now and that will listen later on the podcast, um, how do they get a hold of you if they want to um, pay you for your services? Okay. <laughs> so, so, uh, let, me, let me cut off right there. So, um, a lot of a lot of times, people come to me. I have a hard time saying no, and they get through me <clears throat> when they get through me. What do you mean say no? Like when when they say, hey, "Can you do this?" You know, oh. in this family, and I say, "Oh yeah, yeah, you know, it's okay." And then it, now I learned my lesson. I, I told my wife, "Okay, you do negotiation." Yeah. So everybody comes to me. I said, "Oh, I'll have my wife write you." Why do because I have with me, to that I, person, though? <laughs> I, I was raised in the island. I, I was a I was school out there. I, I, I was born out here, but my parents sent me back to the island, and it's a whole different. Like I, I hate it when I charge people. I like doing that love that thing, but sometimes I always end up giving up all my bricks, and I have no more bricks for my wall. Right. So that's why I give it to her, and okay, she deals I with like all that. that. Yeah, I think it's in our culture, right? Yeah. We're like, when people ask us stuff, we usually just give. And I think we have to break off. When it's my business, you have to understand that I'm trying to, you know, um, expand. This feeds my family. This takes care of my, you know, kids and their food and everything. And I think it's just, I feel the, guilty too. When people ask, anybody ask me about money or anything, I'm like, you got to go talk to Carl. I don't deal with money. I don't want to talk about money. Awkward. I'll give you money. You want money? I'll give you, you know, I'll, I'll give it to you. Yeah, I'll give it to you, but don't ask me about. I, I, well, I send everybody to Carl. I just, <laughs> I'm not comfortable with it. I'm not comfortable with it. But I think it's our culture. We want to give all the time, and yeah. it, it gets to a point where I know the difference now. If it's my yes. business, no, you, we've got to negotiate and talk or whatever. Yeah. But, we're also trying to, you know, we'll, and people say this all the time, we'll spend $300 on a pair of Jordans, but you won't spend, you know, $20 to buy my t-shirt. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's just supporting one another and yeah. showing the love. And, you know, your $20 t-shirt is possibly going to help that company grow to a bigger building, a bigger, mm. you know, bigger camera, mm. better, you know, just right. anything. So I think it's very important that we, um, support Pacifica businesses right. because we're so small and we're trying to get out there and, and, and live our dream, right? That's so true. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Everybody's like, yeah, no freebies, no freebies. That's so funny. <laughs> so, I remember yeah. uh, Danny O.C. Perez, rest in peace. Uh, he was the promoter for Island Reggae Fest in, uh, oh. in Santa Clara. And he would, you know, he said it was crazy. Like I'll see people going to, you know, spend seven hundred dollars on Beyonce tickets, and then the Island Reggae Fest they roll, festival rolls around. It's thirty five yeah. bucks, Complain. and everybody's blowing up his phone, going, "Hey, hook me up!" And he's like, "Yeah." I mean, like, I don't think that it's it's bad intentioned. I think that it's just in our culture of like, you know, "Hey, hook me up, hook me up." Mm. That's just the way that you know, and and to break that, it's just going to take. It's going to take uh, some, you know, some intentional thought process to it. But all the people listening, if there's a PI business out there, just support the PI business. If you want a shirt, there's a shirt out there. There's a, a design, um, and 
you know, you can have a, a great shirt, but you're going to buy it just like you would at Under Armour or right. yeah. Nike That's or something. True. And if, if you want a streaming service for your event, a birthday party or those kind of things, um, you know, there's a price to pay for a, a gap, a deficit in knowledge. And, mm. you know, you all have more knowledge about streaming an event, about cameras and microphones and mixers and, and all those kind of things that, you know, if I have an event, I should pay you for that, that deficit of knowledge because you have knowledge I don't. So we should get a, we should get a hold of Mary. <laughs> yeah. if, if, if they go to your Instagram page. How, how do people get a hold of you when they want to hire you for their their function? So we have our um, Instagram page, the DMs. We also have um, our Facebook page, EPV Films, and they could go into the Messenger. And then we have cards that we've been passing around that has my direct phone number. And I'm like, I should have got a business phone. Right? <laughs> and then we have our email, epvfilms at gmail.com. Awesome. And we are, we, we've had to tell each other to turn off all the electronics, you know, at some point, because I mean, it's gotten really busy to the point where at two in the morning, you know, communicating with people. And then I'm like, okay. And, and, and Evie is always like, do you guys sleep? And I'm like, no, we don't. And with bags under eyes, like, come on, guys, keep going. <laughs> but yeah, those are the, um, the way to get a hold of us. And yeah, that's pretty awesome. easy. It's, it's an hour. Look at that. We were like, we don't know if we can talk for an hour. Oh, we can keep going. Um, <laughs> this is EPV Films, everyone. Please get a hold of them. Follow them on all social media outlets, Instagram, Facebook, epvfilms at gmail.com if you'd like to use their services or use the DM. Um, this is their beautiful daughter, Evie. This is Mary and this is Richard. This is EPV Films. Thank you so much. I'm cry I don't know why I'm crying. I'm always crying. Thank and you then so I'm going to cry. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and your energy and god bless your journey and your work thank you oh, so much thank you thank so you. much thank you love you Take thank care. you